Lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial Radio and Morial TV here live with James Jacob Prash, who's live in England. Jacob, uh, one of the believers had the question about uh, throughout America's history, it seems like there's been social engineering going on. How does that tie in with the ultimate great delusion from our enemy, Satan? We've dealt with this subject before in books such as Shadow of the Beast and also The Dilemma of Laodicea, if you want a more exhaustive consideration of, of these issues. Social engineering is not a modern phenomenon, nor an American or a Western phenomenon. It went back to the Roman Empire, when the Roman Empire would use a hyper-obsession with the Olympics and sports to, dilute, to uh, divert people away from social issues, or when they would... Uh, propagate violence as entertainment in the Olympics, again to divert people's attention away from their own plight economically and socially and so forth, as well as huge pagan idolatrous religious festivities. Social engineering and manipulation have always been around. What we've explained in various of our teachings is the phenomena of the zeitgeist, the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age. The apostate church will always in some way follow the zeitgeist. In the post-Nicene era, commencing particularly with Augustine of Hippo and those who influenced him and those who were influenced by him, after Constantine pseudo-Christianized the Roman Empire, it was a platonic worldview. That was the zeitgeist, Platonism. Well, Augustine led the way into rewriting Christianity as a Platonic religion. In the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance, the zeitgeist saw a resurgence of Aristotelian religion. Hence, Thomas Aquinas wrote the Summa Theologia as Rambam wrote the Guide for the Perplexed. They were imitating what had already taken place in philosophical Islam. This was the zeitgeist. Aristotelianism, medieval scholasticism, that was the zeitgeist. In the 19th century, it was 19th century German rationalism. Liberal higher criticism, people like Rudolf Bultmann, Councilman, Perens, Mo Winkle, these others, they came along with Darwinistic presupposition and began misinterpreting the scriptures Darwinistically following the zeitgeist. This gave us higher criticism. 19th century German rationalism, philosophically. What beget people like, like, like uh, Hegel and, and, and Nietzsche, and, 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 and beginning actually with, with Immanuel Kant, with the a priori and the categorical imperative. These things became something that swallowed up popular theology and scholarship. Uh, what had been traditional conservative Protestantism and things like pietism, and uh, the Moravian movements in Germany and things like this became replaced by higher critical presupposition that came out of Tübingen, Germany, and Germany, and so forth. And as a result of this, biblical Protestantism declined, and eventually the Germans just went back to their Teutonic war gods' ways with the rise of the Third Reich. This was the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age. Liberation theology of people like Desmond Tutu uh, it just follows the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age, uh, where morality is defined not in terms of biblical guidelines of morality, but in terms of one's position on social issues politically. So, therefore, you can have children born out of wedlock, you can have an astronomical divorce where they run away homosexuality, but it's not politically correct to address those issues. We have to address income in, in inequality only because that is the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age. The apostate church, the harlot church, will always follow the zeitgeist. Today, 
you have the stage being set for Antichrist, the coming of Babylon the Great that will be his footstool. You have the false religions of the world quasi uniting. This is what took place with the pontifical religions in the first century under the Roman emperors. Now it's come back again <clears throat> under the guise of the papacy and other such institutions. Interfaith religion, under the guise of the zeitgeist. That is to say, multiculturalism. Multiculturalism encompassing interfaith worship. It's the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age. No matter what the zeitgeist is, however, the spirit on back of the spirit of the age is always the devil. The world is in the power of the wicked one. It's always Satan. He may be operating through and by means of various philosophical trends and pseudo-spiritual paradigms, but ultimately it's always his hand. As I've said many times, as the Holy Spirit is preparing the faithful church for the coming of Christ, the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, as the New Testament calls it, is preparing the way for the coming of the Antichrist. And as always, Satan is working through the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age. Social engineering always derives from the zeitgeist. Always derives from the zeitgeist. Let's take one example. Let's look at our school systems. The United States spends more on education per child than any other country in the world more on education, but it has some of the lowest results. Countries that spend far less per capita per student, such as Singapore and Finland, get far better results. Far better. Why? The American school system is not designed to educate. It's designed to socially engineer children on the basis of the zeitgeist, to conform to the spirit of the age, to be politically correct, to accept multiculturalism, to accept interfaith, to accept the normalcy of sexual abnormality in the areas of homosexuality, to accept abortion despite the medical evidence that it is in fact infanticide when it is, when it is performed without any medical or clinical warrant. It's based on conditioning. It's not based on educating. It's based on conditioning. The educational system is primarily not there to teach children to think. It's there to teach them how not to think or at least not to think outside the box determined by the powers that be. It's propaganda. It's not education. It's conditioning. It's not really there for learning, other than to conform to some ideal. The teachers' unions, certainly in the United States, Great Britain is no different, but in the United States, the teachers' union is a political campaign fund for the Democratic Party. That's what it is. One-third of the teachers in the United States, one-third of the teachers in the United States uh, come from like the lowest 20% of the graduating class. They're not as well selected as they are in countries with better results like Singapore. In the United States, due to financial motives in part, not just social status, medicine, dentistry, and law tend to attract the best and brightest as do high-tech fields. In Singapore, a teacher has the same social status as a lawyer or a physician. It's a desired position, but it's a competitive position. You just can't become a teacher. There's people who become teachers because they get three months a year vacation with pay, a good benefit package, and a subsidized university or college level education. It can be a very good deal. Not only that, but in non-scientific fields particularly, those who can't do teach. If you're not good enough to make it on Wall Street, become an economics professor. If you're no good in the pulpit, become a theology professor at, at, at Yale Divinity School. Those who can't do teach. If you're no good in court, become a law professor. Uh, there are exceptions, like Alan Dershowitz was, but they are only exceptions. Those who can't do teach, because it's not about doing, it's about conditioning. 
It's not about educating. It's about programming. It's not about grooming students to think. It's about grooming them not to think or only to think what you want them to think. It's a big mess. It's social engineering. But on back of it is a spirit, the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age. And on back of that is Satan. Yes, it is setting the stage for Antichrist. It has always been an instrument in Satan's hands, but now it really is. Uh, a worse example would be the Roman Catholic school system, which was designed to stop the spread of, of, of evangelicism and Protestantism after the Reformation. Give us a child to the age of seven and he's ours for life. That's the way it works. It's always an agenda, and the agenda is not God's. It is setting the stage for the man of lawlessness. Yes. Believers need to think outside of man's box. And the only way to think outside of man's box is to get into God's box. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But... In this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church. Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.